Chris from ChristopherHole.com. Welcome to this video where we're going to be talking about and answering or starting to answer the question, is wine healthy? It's something that I get asked on a regular basis and if you listen to my Is Chocolate Healthy uh, podcast, um, we're going to sort of follow a similar trend in that um, we're going to break this up into a few parts. First of all, we're going to sort of look at the origin of um, where this question uh, comes from and then we're going to look at sort of the the, the nutrients uh, within the within wine or within the, the drink that that people are talking about and um, we're going to sort of bring a bit more of a, a greater perspective because what gets shared in the uh, in the mainstream media isn't necessarily uh, very well uh, put together for the um, for the mainstream and um, and general public because they look for a sound bite, they look for one part of it, whereas we're now going to explore um, a couple of other parts, which hopefully brings a little bit more context to be able to answer the question, is, is wine healthy? And before we get into that, uh, I just quickly want to say, if you'd like to come and uh, find me on my social channels, you can come to Facebook, uh, which is Christopher Hole Training. Um, just type that into Facebook, you'll find me, tap like, it'd be great to see you there, answer any other questions. Also on Twitter, which is at Christopher Hull, again, it'd be great to hear from you, um, hear any questions that you have, and again, I can, um, I can put together an answer for you, and hopefully keep you moving forward with your health and fitness. Alternatively, you can come to uh, the website, you can go to ChristopherHull.com forward slash join, Join the monthly newsletter, which is a themed newsletter, which is very interactive. Minimum of five videos, which has a sort of a, an introduction and then and then four parts to it, um, where we uh, we go about sort of talking about one subject, so you can get a little bit more in the way of um, a whole uh, package, if you will, rather than just a few minutes here or there in a podcast or in a YouTube video. So it's a little bit more in depth and there's a little bit more to it. But back to uh, today's podcast where we're trying to answer the question or at least beginning to answer the question uh, is wine healthy because in the media it gets talked about a lot and people use it as a justification uh, to drink wine which we'll also discuss um, a little bit later on. So to start with um, we're going to sort of talk about the origins of where this question comes from or where the idea is wine healthy comes from. Well it starts and sort of originates, I guess, from um, what's called the Mediterranean diet. And the Mediterranean diet uh, sort of comes from Greece, southern Italy, southern Spain, the, you know, around, around the Mediterranean. It's a diet that's based heavily on um, olive oil, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds and whole grains. So it's very much a plant-based diet and what I call a plant-based diet. Some other people call a plant-based diet um, vegetarian and vegan. Um, I call it a diet that's heavily based on fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds and whole grains. Um, the Mediterranean diet obviously has a high uh, olive oil content because of um, whereabouts it is in the world. But what they also have is a moderate intake of wine, meat and fish and a very low intake of sweets and processed foods. So what is sort of happening here, if we look at the wider picture of that, where the Mediterranean diet is a healthy diet and people live longer and they have low incidences of uh, coronary heart disease and things like that. That's not necessarily because they're, they're drinking the wine, that's because their whole diet is based on plant foods and then they wrap around small amounts of alcohol, meat, fish and even smaller amounts of sweets and processed food. So that's kind of how we need to come about starting this conversation is where the wine may have some um, healthy components to it, which we're going to talk about next, what makes these people healthy in the Mediterranean diet is their whole diet rather than just the small little bits that people are doing with regards to, okay, they drink a little bit of wine, it's got a few components in it that are good for me, or they do this or they do that. So it's very much understanding that what we've got to look at with regards to health is the whole diet. Not one food, not one nutrient, not even one macronutrient, but the whole diet itself. And if it's a diet based on whole foods, plants, um, with 
moderate to low intakes of alcohol, meat, fish, sweets and processed foods, then you're going to be a lot healthier than if it's flipped around the other way and it's based on processed foods, sweets, meat, alcohol with a few bits of whole foods and fruits and vegetables in. So that's kind of, I guess, sort of the, the starting point. So what we're now going to do is we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, what's called phytochemicals. Now this is the component of the wine that people are um, uh, sort of lauding to be uh, the reason to drink wine and sort of save yourself from coronary heart disease. Um, because again, it's not necessarily that one component, it's that whole diet. But with that said, there are um, 8,000 phytochemicals present in whole foods, and they include things like plant sterols, flavonoids, and sulfur-containing uh, components. 4,000 are found in tea, broccoli, kale, onions, garlic, apples, and red wine. But what I, I guess I should say is it's more black grapes than, um, than the red wine itself. Because if you listen to my um, Is Chocolate Healthy uh, podcast, then we were talking about the, the sort of the, the handling of the food after harvesting. And that can diminish the amount of, um, of uh, 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 good nutrients within the food. So what we need to think about is Yes, the wine has these phytochemicals in it. It has, well, the plant sterols to be um, more specific. And what we also get in there is alcohol. So where we've got a good component to it, which is what people are marketing and selling in the media, we've also got alcohol within it. Now, alcohol is essentially its ethanol, which we're going to talk about in a second. But the alcohol component of the wine uh, can make up, depending on how much you drink, but it can make up 10% of daily intake of calories. So if you're a regular drinker of wine, then um, it can, it's obviously going to take up more percentage. If you're less of an um, alcohol drinker or wine drinker, then it's going to make up less. But the thing with alcohol is it's, it's a component called ethanol. And ethanol does a few things in the body. First of all, it's been found to inhibit fat mobilization. It's been found to increase urinary uh, nitrogen excretion and it's also been there to affect protein synthesis. So with regards to those, it's very much, it's not creating necessarily a healthy environment. So the more of that you're taking in, the less of a healthy environment it's, it's creating, if you will. Now again, as I mentioned at the start, if we think about the whole diet itself, if your diet is based on fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, whole grains, with moderate intakes of wine, or alcohol, um, red wine, meat, fish, sweets, processed foods, then your body is going to be extracting from the majority of the diet that you're taking in, from the fruits, the vegetables, and the plant foods, it's going to be extracting all those nutrients. And the, the animal foods, the alcohol, and the sweets and processed foods they aren't going to be having as much of an effect because they're just not there in volume, if that makes sense. So that's kind of how we have to look at it. Yes, it has good components to it, but it also has bad components to it. And if you're having a lot of it, then obviously the bad components are going to be outweighing the good components, if that makes sense. So in sort of conclusion, to answer or for me to answer is wine healthy, the short answer I would give is it's not necessarily healthy, but we can consume it in small amounts as long as the rest of our diet is based on whole foods, plant foods, and with moderate intake of the alcohol, the meats, the fish, the sweets, and the processed foods. So hopefully you can start to see a, a theme out there that I'm sort of bringing across. And I guess to finish off, to answer the question is why do most people use alcohol and sort of justify themselves drinking it? It's mainly a social aspect, a relaxation aspect, and a way of um, getting away from the, the stresses in life, if you will. It gives them that time just to go, right, I'm done, I'm going to relax, I'm just going to focus on drinking this wine, watching the TV, having this meal, whatever it might be. So there isn't necessarily a health component in that, but they use the health components 
of the food, the phytochemicals, to justify drinking more of it. If they bothered to look at what they're doing objectively, write everything down, um, itemise the calories, so on and so forth, they might find that actually I'm not doing enough of what's healthy and I'm doing slightly more of what's unhealthy, therefore the wine isn't going isn't gonna to do me any good, it's only going to make things worse. So hopefully this has brought a little bit more context and a little bit more um, specificity to the question, is wine healthy? Obviously continue your search, continue learning more information about it, find out more, question what I've said, go and um, do your own research on it. Um, but my answer is, it's not necessarily healthy, but we can consume it as long as the rest of the diet is based on the whole foods and the plant foods, which is the healthy part of the diet. So many thanks for listening. Um, please do come along to Facebook, Christopher Hole Training, drop a like on there. Come along to Twitter, um, at Christopher Hole, drop a follow on there. And also come along to the website, ChristopherHole.com forward slash join, enter your name and email address and uh, sign up to the monthly newsletter where you can find out more about stuff like this. So that's Chris from Christopher Hole Training. I'll speak to you in another episode of the podcast. Thank you.